Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and it's time for the French GP of Le Mans in our Moto3 career mode. We now look to the lights and await for them to disappear because we are on pole position and we are about to go racing here in the French GP here in Le Mans. Grand into the lead but look at Tatsuki Suzuki, wow what a start from him and I guess I'm yet to mention Power setting 1 is the only power setting I will be using in this particular Grand Prix because I decimated the qualifying, decimated the practice and the warm-up with just absolute ease. One lap for pretty much and that was it. It's just too easy, so power setting 1 is what's going to have to be used for this one to try and make this one an interesting race. But so far, Sergio Garcia into the lead, Tatsuki Suzuki in second place, Suzuki looking pretty strong so far in this one so far. This one as well actually guys, just to let you know, was pre-update. So this was recorded pre-update and uh, if anything's changed since the update, I haven't seen it. So <laughs> there you go. As far as this one so far, we are trying to just uh, win here in the French GP. Trailing in behind uh, Sergio Garcia, going around the outside of Satsuki Suzuki, very aggressive on the brakes into carriage verts and now bringing on the power with the first power setting right in the slipstream of the Aspar rider. Following the slipstream, we're going to try and get up on the inside and possibly into uh, the blue S's. Oh, me. Uh, why did Sergio Garcia go so slow there? No idea why, but into Shimano Buff for the first and uh, many times here today. Just wondering why Sergio Garcia went so slow there. Is this why the gap is massive? A second is the advantage already. There is clearly an issue in that particular corner. We've seen it in her ref just a couple of days ago where the riders would just come to an almost standstill, breaking in turn six for the Danny Pedroza corner. But here, feeling great with the CIP-powered KTM. I absolutely love this KTM. It feels fantastic here in Moto3. The brakes are the parts I'm still used to, but I do feel really, really solid. And the more I'm playing Modern GP22, the more I'm adapting to the bikes and the brakes. Of course, the brakes are a big thing. Gotta be, gotta be good on the brakes. If you're not good on the brakes, you'll never win. So as simple as that, and I guess that's the battle. I guess that's the battle that's concluded already in this particular Grand Prix. So my personal goal for this one is to try and be as consistent as possible, chuck in some great lap times with power setting one enabled, and just do what we do best, and that is lead the Grand Prix. If we stay where we are, we're going to have like a 50-point championship lead, which I'm a little bit disappointed about because... I want it to be tighter, I want it to be much closer and much more competitive and I haven't seen Dennis Fodger in this session yet. Dennis Fodger has crashed out so many times this season in my career mode, it's not even funny. I hope he gets it together, I mean we do have at least one of the layup art Hondas right there now on the podium within Tatsuki Suzuki. We're breaking in for Shimano Buff, the heart rate pretty calm, pretty relaxed at the 96 barrier going up to 100 every now and again. Of course, hovering and teetering is tend to what they tend to do, but uh, for the time being, bringing into the blue S's for the second time of asking, chucking the uh, KTM to one side and of course now to the left for turn 12. Really comfortable KTM, but one regret I do have is upgrading this bike. I really should have left it completely stock to see how we would have fared against the competition this year in Moto3. Now, of course, Getting to that halfway season point is where I'm going to start considering not only moving up to Moto2, but what team it will be with. So I guess if you guys have any idea of what team you want me to join in Moto2, let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, if you have any ideas about even possibly jumping up to MotoGP, just let me know. I'd rather go through the rankings, though. Move to Moto2, and then eventually move to MotoGP. I would like to do two seasons in one of them, so maybe either two seasons in Moto3 or maybe two in Moto2. I guess two in Moto2 would make more sense, but I'm not sure yet. The sooner we get to MotoGP, I guess you could say is the better, but I, I'm a sucker for Moto3. I really love this category, and it's a, it's a shame that it's not competitive, and no one is giving me a tough time. Tatsuki Suzuki was great at the start of the season. In fact, the competition, the, the excitement was good. And the excitement is still right, it's still good, I mean, we're only in Le Mans, it's just that this one, I already know, is just not going to be that great. <laughs> it never is, Le Mans is that track, I don't think we've ever finished any lower than first position in Le Mans in a past MotoGP game. If I have, let me know, but I really don't remember. 
But what I can tell you is a little bit of a spoiler for the next couple of races and so on. The championship does tighten up. So definitely stick around. If you're enjoying this sort of content and you want to stick around for more, I highly recommend you hit the subscribe button. And of course, as always, hit the like button as well because it helps the algorithm. Brings more aces to this fantastic channel. But now going into turn 13 and then almost a little bit too wide there for record them onto turn 14. Going wider into that particular part on the entry does give you penalty time or at least in this game's case the a warning for the track limits so be very careful if you're going to be following a similar line to what I did just there. And now onto the right hand side going full throttle absolutely smashing the KTM going into Dunlop as we now break very firm for the third corner and then just chuck it to the right hand side for the fourth turn here underneath the Dunlop bridge as Sergio Garcia has gone down. Sergio Garcia of course another championship protagonist did he actually crash twice then, or is that just a weird animation that's showing up on the screen? Not entirely sure, but what a great result it is for Matteo Batelli down there in fifth position. Great job for the very young Italian. But from young to old to the other side of the spectrum, John McPhee there in eighth position. I say he's old, he's actually about the same age as me, but for Moto3, I guess it can be quite old. But breaking very firm now for the right hand of Gary Trevert, going a little bit too deep there. No, we were able to save it. I felt like it was going to go too wide there. And the medium tyre, especially on the rear and the right hand side, it does feel like it's getting a little bit loose every now and again, which is not a problem because, of course, if we do happen to slow down, that can only mean that Suzuki and Ortola can give the fight to Grant, who is dominating this Grand Prix of Le Mans right now. The French, French GP and the French fans are witnessing greatness right now here today. Going into the blue S's, not a problem. Three tenths of a second quicker than the previous lap time of a 143.808, or excuse me, the fastest lap time which we set earlier on. But now breaking into the penultimate corner. Make sure we don't go too wide for recordman, which we don't, and we nailed it there as all the birds fly ahead of us. Hopefully they're watching and subscribing. And crossing the line, a 143.498. So not only returning back into the 143s, but a low 143 or a mid 143 at that. So this gap now breaches four seconds to Tatsuki Suzuki. Goodness gracious me. Now all I wanted was the update to increase the AI difficulty and apparently it has not been increased, it's actually been decreased. I noticed a few issues when I was playing, especially in Argentina. It seems the AI just gave up. And for some reason, they always start off really sluggish and really slow and then start to really pick things up. And I'm hoping for the same thing here, but the gap's still sitting at four tenths, uh, excuse me, four seconds with power setting one enabled. There's not going to be any surprises here. None at all. It is just purely dominance coming in from the 27 year old. Oh! <laughs> I really lost the front there. <laughs> Our protagonist here almost went down there into garage, but that was too close. Hearts in mouth stuff there. I'm surprised the heart rate monitor didn't fly up because I certainly felt nervous. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> that was really close, but we got to do the right thing, and that is once you've made a mistake like that, even for myself, and make a mistake with commentary, you just got to keep on moving. Keep on going. Don't stop and hesitate and think, oh, what have I just done? Forget it. Just move on and just continue with these lap fast lap times. So go into recordment for the fifth time of asking. We'll only be tackling it one more time because across the line we will go. We are now starting the final lap of the Le Mans GP. And I've got to say, this one has gone really quick. It's been a nice, easy one on the throat. Not had to really scream and shout at the uh, for the commentary, but I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it nonetheless, and expect to see more Power Setting 1, Power Setting 2 videos from now on, because I want to keep it competitive. I really want to keep it really, really tight and very enjoyable, as John McPhee has just found himself going into the gravel. He was in 8th position, which has now been replaced by Diogo Moreira, who's actually right up there now. It's the runner-up in the championship, so fair play to Diogo Moreira, the young Brazilian. But yes, keeping the competitive edge is the part that makes this game for me. We did it in MotoGP 21 and it was absolutely thrilling. Being on Power Setting 1 and suffering with the lack of speed on the straights 
it was great and I really can't wait for the rest of uh, this season to come because there are going to be some of those Grand Prix that require a lot of strength on the speeds and we won't have that because we'll be stuck on power setting one but for now we'll look to that in the future but for right now we are doing such a good job that that moment we had into garage there didn't really hinder us at all we lost a little bit of time yes but in the end of the day the lap times were still pretty decent but approaching now to turn 12 we only have two more corners here in Le Mans as we beckon another victory for Matt Grant, another victory for Dot Race and the Aces. So going into recordment for the final time of asking, massive celebration for the winner of the French GP. So an absolutely dominating performance, decimating the field and finishing seven seconds ahead of one of the championship rivals, Tatsuki Suzuki. A further second ahead of another podium rider, Ivan Ortola. So looking at the championship standings and Tatsuki Suzuki has positioned himself ahead of Diogo Moreira now with that fantastic second place, but he is still trailing by 61 points. Moreira trails by 72. We'll finish up with the CIP Greenbauer KTM team leading the team championship by 47 points clear from Leopard Honda and 95 clear from Gas Gas and MT Helmets MSI. So part Ferme once again for the man on your screens. It's certainly getting a regular occurrence, this one. Probably too regular, if I do say so myself, because I expected more of a fight from the AI. But hey-ho, let's not dwell. Once again, another great race, another victory in the bag. Really enjoying this one and getting up to speed with MotoGP 22. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you for a lot more Dot Race content. Thanks for watching, guys, and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.